Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. So, we are seeing Tesla's full self-driving doing some truly amazing stuff in China. But we are also seeing Huawei system performing extremely well. And we of course cannot forget about Mobileye system that is in over 190 million vehicles globally with their ADAS system. But what are the fundamental difference in the technologies between these three players? And why is it that Tesla system can drive everywhere and the others can't? Well, let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So let's start by taking a look at Mobileye's system. Mobileye is a key player in the autonomous driving space and cannot be ignored. Focusing on both advanced driver assist systems, so ADA system, and fully autonomous solutions. Their approach is grounded in a combination of sensor fusion, redundant systems, and a strong emphasis on safety and scalability on their ADA systems anyway. But Mobileye does have a huge data collection. Mobileye's technology is deployed in over 190 million vehicles globally for driver assist systems. So a very important distinction between Tesla's full self-driving supervised and an ADAS system. This is not 190 million vehicles on fully autonomy, but just a driver assist system, but still gives them a massive data advantage for training and refining their autonomous system compared to most others. A cornerstone of Mobileye's approach is their true reduction redundancy concept, which involves developing two independent systems, one based on cameras alone and another using combinations of radar and lidar. This dual system approach ensures robustness, especially in challenging conditions like poor visibility. But the backside of this is also poor software. This is something that Tesla has said many times before, that when they stop using radar on their cars, they found out just how bad their software really was. Using two systems to be one is like their software is riding a bike with support wheels. And Mobileye not only has software and radar, they also using LiDAR as well. So this gives them a nice redundancy, but it's probably hiding their software's true levels. And when it comes to the whole Tesla full self-driving system can't see in the rain, well, we have seen that Tesla full self-driving not only drives in heavy rain or fog, but we have seen them drive in heavy rain and fog at the same time. So if the Tesla system can't see anymore, I think it's safe to say that no one should be driving in those conditions, human or AI. But Tesla system does see much better than us humans and can see very nicely in heavy rain, fog and snow. But as Mobileye system adapts to local speed limits and driving conventions, suggesting a reliance on high definition maps and real time data. Mobileye's autonomous driving system, particularly Mobileye Drive, relies on their proprietary mapping solution called Mobileye Roadbook, which is built using their Road Experience Management or REM technology. REM uses crowdsourced data from Mobileye's equipped vehicles to create and update maps. By January 2021, REM has collected data from around 7.5 billion kilometers. So while all of this is very impressive, that also includes just their ADAS system. But it does show us that they for fully autonomy, Mobileye still relies on mapping, not as highly as someone like Waymo, but still relies on 3D mapping made with their cars driving in the areas. It doesn't mean that it can't drive where there is no pre-mapped area, but their system is optimized for pre-mapped areas where the roadbook provides detailed centimeter accuracy data. So for fully autonomy, HD maps are likely essential to ensure safety and precision, which means they are dependent on pre-mapped regions. So even though I think Mobileye is one of the best contenders to be competition to Tesla's full self-driving cars and the robot taxi, I still think their software might not be as good as some people think, as it is being helped by supporting wheels in terms of LiDAR and radar and pre-mapping. So this might give them some safety and redundance, but it might slow them down to get to a system that can drive solely on vision and neural network and be able to handle any scenario. So it's not a truly 
generalized solution they're working on. And Mobileye also offers a hand-off, eyes-on system called Supervision, which is comparable to Tesla's full self-driving supervised. This system is already deployed in China, generating $1,500 per car for Mobileye from the OEMs. But this also shows the problem the legacy automakers have. $1,500, that is what most of them makes on profit on selling an ICE car. But EVs, they are still losing money on and having to pay Mobileye $1,500 just to get a level 2 plus system is not going to make their situation much better. And the Mobileye system still relies on LiDAR and radar and also have a vision based system as well. So their system is going to be so much more expensive than what Tesla system is. And Mobileye doesn't manufacture a car so they need OEMs to handle that part. And Ford has already said that they will not put level 3 systems in their more affordable EVs as LiDAR systems are too expensive. So I guess they will not get a mobilized system either as it is expensive with this many sensors, not just LiDAR. Which, again, I have explained before, will probably make them uncompetitive on cost per mile when it comes to getting robotaxis on the street in volume compared to Tesla Cybercab because they produce the whole robotaxi including the system and everything, for about $15,000. Again, their unboxed production method is truly the game changer here. But Tesla's full self-driving videos from China also shows just how capable Tesla's system is. They have not pre-mapped anything, and as you can see, some places there are not even roads available where Tesla's system still drives. So I also think it feels like for the Chinese that Tesla's full self-driving just came out of absolutely nowhere. As I have said, it's going to feel the same here in Europe when it comes, as not many people knows what Tesla's system is capable of. And suddenly, we will just have cars driving themselves. But in China, they came out of nowhere and has just taken the lead in autonomous driving as Ray for Tesla also wrote on X. This Chinese driver owns both a Tesla vehicle with FSD and a Huawei i2 M9 with ADS. He prefers FSD over ADS for his daily driving. FSD can be activated anywhere he wants, as we have also seen in other videos, where it is driving not just on a dirt road, but a sand field. I don't believe there is any other system in the world right now that would be able to drive a place like that but Tesla's. Very, very impressive, but as Ray wrote, ADS can only be activated in pre-mapped areas, not high definition maps like Mobileye, but still pre-mapped areas, meaning it can only operate in regions where it has prior data. So it can't drive everywhere as Tesla system can. And it is still a rule based solution, meaning it relies on predefined rules like if a pedestrian is detected, stop, which means it can struggle in unpredictable and complex scenarios. So even though it still runs by transformers, meaning neural network, it is not a generalized solution as it's based on rules. But it has both BEV plus transformer architecture. And BEV is not battery electric vehicle. It stands for bird's eye view. So it does a lot of cool stuff and is using a neural network, but still relies on LiDAR and pre-mapping and rule-based system. So like this full self-driver tester said, full self-driving is fundamentally better. Yes, even though Huawei's system is very capable in the areas it can drive, it is a fundamental different system. And as long as they rely on pre-mapping, it will also be very slow to scale and will not be as flexible like Tesla's full self-driving that can drive everywhere a human can. So Tesla's system in China has come what seems like out of nowhere and is now the most capable system in China. And it has just started very, very impressive and really shows the resilience of Tesla's system. Because the same thing will be true when it comes to Europe, then it will be able to drive everywhere supervised and blow people's minds. So even though we are seeing Huawei having some extremely capable systems, they are limited by pre-mapping, which does not make it a generalized solution. And Mobileye also have some very impressive ADA system and autonomous driving system, but fully autonomous skills looks like it still relies on pre-mapping. And their systems seems very expensive, as they have chosen not just to have the expensive LiDAR system, but also a neural network and vision 
commission-based system as well. So they have both systems that makes them more expensive. And even though they probably have a great redundancy, it's probably overcomplicating the system and hides the software's flaws or the true level of capabilities. But most importantly, when we look at the competition for Tesla, we are still talking about third-party companies. So we don't have an automaker that is also a software company that is making all of this in-house. So they do rely on other companies. So it will be a collaboration between a software company and an OEM, and they both need to earn money on this adventure. But Tesla is doing this all by themselves and is not only making a complete generalized solution, but has also revolutionized the production of the car, designed and produced only for being a robo-taxi. So even though the other guys' systems are very capable, the cost advantage Tesla has on a generalized solution is going to be basically impossible for the others to match. But let's see how it all evolves. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.